And then we go to ayah number 25. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then gives us a specific instance where he speaks about how he has given victory to the believers in the past. Allah says, لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَوَاطِنَ كَثِيرًا وَيَوْمَ حُنَيْنِ إِذْ أَعْجَبَتْكُمْ كَثْرَتُكُمْ فَلَمْ تُغْنِ عَنْكُمْ شَيْئًا وَضَاقَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْأَرْضُ بِمَا رَحُبَتْ ثُمَّ وَلَّيْتُمْ مُدْبِرِينَ Allah says, God indeed granted you victory on many a battlefield. And on the day of Hunayn, when you were impressed at how numerous you were, but it availed you not. And the earth, despite its breath, closed in upon you. Then you turned your backs. Now, in this ayah, the Battle of Hunayn is mentioned. The Battle of Hunayn was one of the most important events after the conquest of Mecca. The conquest of Mecca took place in the eighth year after the Hijrah. Perhaps the most important, one of the most important events after the conquest of Mecca was the Battle of Hunayn. And this was the last battle that was led by the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa himself. This battle is so significant that Allah singles it out and He mentions it by name. The Battle of Badr is mentioned by name and the Battle of Hunayn are mentioned by name. Rasulullah fought many battles, but these two battles are mentioned specifically. Now, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tested the faith of the believers, of the companions of the Prophet in a way that he had not tested them before. And this shows you, brothers and sisters, that the, the divine trials and tests are ongoing. It's not that Allah was testing the Mu'mineen only when they were in Mecca or only in Badr and Uhud. Allah was testing the Sahaba up until the last moments of the Prophet's life. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did with previous nations. Bani Israel, when they were living under the tyranny of Pharaoh and they were suffering, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was testing them. They were going through a difficult trial. When Musa alayhi salam rescues them from Fir'aun, does the trial end? The trial doesn't end. Even after releasing them from the tyranny of Fir'aun after crossing the Red Sea, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests them in other ways. Now, Allah says, لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَوَاطِنَ كَثِيرًا Allah says, God has given victory, granted you victory on many a battlefield. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the 23 years of his prophetic mission, he fought approximately 80 battles. Roughly 80 battles were fought during the 23 years. And in some of these battles, the believers were so sincere that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends malaika to support them. Can you imagine how there has to be a certain degree of ikhlas? where those who are fighting are doing it with so much sincerity and devotion that Allah fortifies them with help from the angels. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ali Imran, ayah number 124, he says, بَلَا إِن تَصْبِرُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah number 124 of Surah Ali Imran, he speaks about how either in the battle of Badr or Uhud, he supported the believers with 3,000 angels. Now, some of the Mufassireen, they say there's a dispute among them. 
Are these angels only there to give spiritual strength to the believers? Or do they come down and actually fight? You know, there are some historical accounts where even some of the mushrikeen report seeing non-human soldiers in the battlefield. Some of them even reported seeing, you know, soldiers that didn't even look human. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down this support. Now it's interesting, there's an interesting story related to this ayah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he granted victory on many a battlefield. Rasulullah fought about 80. Al-Mutawakkil al-Abbasi, the, the famous, the notorious Abbasid Khalifa, he was once poisoned by one of his relatives. Subhanallah, these Khulafa of Bani Umayyah, Bani Abbas, their own family members, they poison each other for the sake of this kursi. They fight with each other for dunya. One of his relatives poisons him. And he makes a nadr, he makes a vow that if I regain my health, if I survive, I will pay malan kathira. I will pay a lot of wealth in charity. He recovers, and now it's time for him to fulfill his nadr. He has to fulfill his vow. But he didn't specify how much he's supposed to pay. Because when he made the nadr, when he made the vow, he said that I vow to pay a lot of money. Malin kathira. But he didn't specify. So now he starts to ask the fuqaha, the ulama, that I made a nadr to give a lot of money to the poor, but I didn't specify how much. So how much should I pay? Some of them said, you have to pay 10,000 dinars. Others said that you have to pay 100,000. Some said you have to pay 50,000. Mutawakkil was very stingy. He didn't want to pay that much. So he says, go and ask the dark-skinned man from Bani Hashim, meaning Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam. Imam al-Hadi, he had dark skin complexion. And this was a way... In, in, at least in Mutawakkil's mind, he tried to insult the Imam. They're in the, the Islamic tradition, it doesn't matter what the complexion of your skin is. In the Akramakum Allahi Atqaqum, but this is Bani Abbas. In any case, Mutawakkil summons Imam al Hadi. He says, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, I made a nadr that if I recover from my illness, I'm going to pay malan kathira. How much should I pay? I didn't specify. Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam, he says 80 dinars. Mutawakkil says 80. Why 80? Some of these ulama, they're saying 100,000, 10,000. I asked them for proof. They couldn't give me proof. They were just giving me numbers. You're telling me to pay 80 dinars. What is the evidence? Do you have a dalil? Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam, he recites this ayah where Allah says, لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَوَاطِنَ كَثِيرًا Allah granted you victory on many, on a lot of battlefields. So if Allah considers 80 to be kathira, your nadr of paying mal and kathira, you can also pay 80 and it suffices. You see, brothers and sisters, how how only the Ahlul Bayt السلام, can extract such a ruling from the Holy Quran. لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَوَاطِنَ كَثِيرًا Imam says 80 dinars and Mutawakkil he pays 80 dinars. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions that he granted victory to the believers on many fields. وَيَوْمَ حُنَيْنِ the Battle of Hunayn was one of the battles in which Allah granted victory to the believers. Now, it's important for me to shed some light on the Battle of Hunayn. Now, the Battle of Hunayn 
took place after the conquest of Mecca. Now, it's important for you to understand, my dear brothers and sisters, that prior to the conquest of Mecca, the Muslim community was relatively still small. Only after Rasulullah conquered Mecca do you see people entering Islam in large groups. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nasr, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا Prior to the conquest of Mecca, people would become Muslim in small groups. One person joins Rasulullah, maybe 10, 15 people, maybe 100 people here and there. But generally, people were joining Islam in small numbers prior to the conquest of Mecca. Individuals were joining. But after Rasulullah conquers Mecca, he has 10,000 soldiers, they conquer Mecca, people start to join Islam in large groups. Thousands, entire tribes are taking their shahada. They're joining Islam in large numbers. Now when this happens, there are certain tribes that see this as a big threat. They were hoping that Islam would be confined to Medina and that's it. Now Rasulullah is conquering Mecca. All of these tribes are joining. Islam is now gaining a lot of momentum. And this starts to scare two tribes in the Arabian Peninsula, the tribe of Hawazin and the tribe of Thaqif. These two tribes, my dear brothers and sisters, are tribes that are made of made up of some of the most ferocious warriors in Arabia. Thaqif, you know, you know, for example, Mukhtar, Mukhtar ibn Ubaidullah Thaqafi. Mukhtar is from Thaqif. Thaqif and Hawazin, these are not ordinary tribes. These are tribes that are renowned for their courage in the battlefields. And these two tribes are predominantly non-Muslim. When they hear that Rasulullah has conquered Mecca, they decide to do what? They decide to attack Mecca. So now they're planning a surprise attack on the Prophet and on the Muslim community in Mecca. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he's in Mecca. He receives news, he receives intelligence that the tribe of Thaqif and Hawazim are planning a surprise attack. They're moving towards Mecca to attack the Muslims, to, to stop the spread of Islam. And Thaqif and Hawazim some of these tribesmen, they used to say that the only reason why Islam has gotten so far is because they have yet to fight people like us in the battlefield. You know, all of this time, they have been fighting sissies in the battlefield. The tribe of Thaqif and Hawazin, they say, okay, now we're going to put an end to this new religion. This Muhammad, we're going to finish him. We've remained silent for too long. Now we're going to descend upon Mecca and we're going to obliterate the Muslims, and they were very confident. Rasulullah in, in Mecca, after people start joining, there are 12,000 who are willing to fight. Rasulullah enters Mecca with 10,000, thousands upon thousands join, 12,000 are able to fight. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he mobilizes this army. And they leave Mecca. But Rasulullah doesn't give them any details. He just says that I need, I need my army, I need all of us to assemble and to leave Mecca. Rasulullah did not want any bloodshed 
to take place in Mecca. Mecca is a sanctuary. There's, you're, you're not allowed to fight in Mecca. He, just like what Imam al Hussein did. He leaves Mecca. Rasulullah also leaves Mecca to intercept the tribes of Hawazin and Thaqif. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi has 12,000. 12,000 soldiers, brothers and sisters. This was the largest army that was assembled in Arabian history. 12,000 of them, armed to the teeth. They're marching towards to intercept Hawazin and Thaqif. Hawazin and Thaqif, how many soldiers do they have total? 4,000. So now, for the first time in the history of Islam, the Muslims greatly outnumber their opponents. So this is now the opposite of Badr. It's the opposite of Uhud. It's the opposite of most of the battles. In the Battle of Badr, 313 versus 1,000. They're outnumbered by three. The Battle of Uhud, some say it was 1,000. Muslims versus 4,000 or 3,000 mushrikeen. The Muslims in virtually every battle, they were outnumbered. Now, Rasulullah has 12,000. And Hawazin and Thaqif, 4,000. And the fact that they were still willing to fight Rasulullah shows you how confident they were. Even though they only had 4,000 men, they were certain that they were going to obliterate the Prophet and his companions. As the Prophet was leaving Mecca, Abu Bakr looked at the army and he says that now we will not be defeated because of our great numbers. Because all the other battles, they were outnumbered. So Abu Bakr now says we're in good shape. Now, for sure, we're going to be granted victory on account of our numbers. And this was a big mistake he made by making this statement. So what happened? The army travels and they approach a valley called Hunain. Hunain was a very narrow valley. It was a, it was a pass through the mountains. So you have... 12,000, an army of 12,000 who are now making their way through this narrow passage. Right at the time of Fajr, at dawn, when the Muslim army arrived, at dawn, Hawazin and Thaqif, they were hiding in the mountains. The armies had yet to face each other in the battlefield. There was a surprise attack at dawn by Hawazin and Thaqif. So the front of the army, they get attacked. And because it's so narrow, everyone is so confined, those who are in the front, because they were so shocked and so surprised by this attack, they start to run. So imagine this, the army is moving this way. There's a surprise attack in the front. And some of these Sahaba are now turning back and they're running. So what happens? Now there's a stampede. So you have some Sahaba running and it creates panic. There were some companions who died in that battle because of the stampede. So they started to run. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he describes the psyche of the companions. You were impressed at your uh, how numerous you were. This is in reference to the statement of Abu Bakr and others, that we have large numbers, we're in good shape, we're not gonna be defeated. Your large numbers did, was of no avail to you. You were attacked and you all ran. You guys all took off. You know, when you're being attacked and you're trying to escape, the world seems like a very small place. You just want to get away, but it, you feel like you're so confined. Allah says they were so terrified that the earth 
despite its vastness, started to close in on them. They felt that they were suffocating from fear. They started to run. And some of them, when they would run, they would avoid making eye contact with Rasulullah. Rasulullah is standing, and they're running past the Prophet, and they're not looking at him. Imagine the khudlan, how they abandon the Prophet. So this is happening. 12,000 brothers and sisters. Do you know how many remained? They started to run and run and run. Only about, some say 8, some say 10, some say 14 of the Bani Hashim, the closest ones to the Prophet, they remain. Ali ibn Abi Talib was there. Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, the uncle of the Prophet. When he saw all of these people running, Rasulullah tells him that tell them to come back. Tell them Rasulullah is still here. Because Al Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib had such a large, uh, has, uh, he had such a strong voice, he was telling them, he was calling them, Oh, the people of Surah Al Baqarah, because Surah Al Baqarah was revealed in Medina. Oh, the Ansar, oh, the Muhajireen, come back. Do not abandon the Messenger of Allah. Some of them ran. The Munafiqeen, they ran. You have the Bani Hashim who remained, Ali ibn Abi Talib and a handful of others. And then you have those who came back. They did Tawbah. They came back. So what is that? What is what is happening here? Allah only gives victory to the pious, to the mu'mineen. It seems that this is a process of filtering out the munafiqeen. The munafiqeen are removed. Those who ran away and did tawbah, they're accepted. After the munafiqeen are separated from the mu'mineen, this is when the victory comes. This is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, ثُمَّ أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَىٰ رَسُولِهِ وَعَلَىٰ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Now you may ask me, Allah says then, in ayah number 26, then God sent down His tranquility upon His Messenger and upon the believers. وَأَنزَلَ جُنُودًا لَمْ تَرَوْهَا وَعَذَّبَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ Then God, sent down his tranquility upon his messenger and upon the believers and sent down hosts whom whom you see not and punished those who disbelieved and that is the recompense of the disbelievers now you may ask me why didn't sakina why didn't tranquility come down at the beginning of the battle because sakina only comes down on the prophet and mu'mineen there were munafiqeen there the munafiqeen were filtered out. They ran away. After the munafiqeen are removed from the ranks, there is only Rasulullah and the real, the real army of God is left. And this is where the tranquility descends. Now this Sakina comes down upon the Holy Prophet ﷺ during times of great distress and hardship. And inshallah, perhaps next week we'll go into more detail about the meaning of this Sakina. But only after this happens, you see that the Sakina comes down upon the Holy Prophet and the Mu'mineen, and the believers are granted victory at that battle. Now, when the, when the Munafiqeen run away, and the mu'mineen start to come back. Rasulullah says, Al-an hamiyan watiz. That now the battle, now we're ready to begin the battle. Now I have my real soldiers. And the Prophet fights and Amir al mumineen fight and they achieve victory. Now, what I want to draw your attention to, brothers and sisters, is keep in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah. He's giving us a glimpse into the psyche of the companions of the Prophet 
And this is when? This is at the end of Rasulullah's life. No one can say, oh, this was in the beginning when their iman was weak. They witnessed so many miracles. They witnessed the conquest of Mecca. They've been with Rasulullah now for over two decades. And still, in the battle of Hunayn, when their lives are in danger, they run away. They run away without even without the slightest reluctance. They depart, they run. So even up until the last years of the Prophet's life, you see that the majority, the majority of those who call themselves the companions of the Prophet, they did not remain. Even in the Battle of Hunayn, 12,000 of them, these 12,000, were they Jews or Christians? They're Sahaba. And the majority of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Thumma wallaytum mudbirin. Wallaytum mudbirin is that you turn and you run and you don't even look back. You know, it's one thing to run and you look back to see, you know, what, what happened to Rasulullah. Allah says, Wallaytum mudbirin. These sahaba, they ran and they didn't even bother to look back and see if Rasulullah got injured. They didn't even look back. And how many, was this only a handful? The majority of them, Allahu Akbar, the majority of them, and the Battle of Hunayn, they ran and they didn't even turn back. They didn't even look back. Some people ask, they're surprised, how all of these Sahaba, they didn't support Ali ibn Abi Talib after the death of the Prophet? Ya Akhi, they didn't support Rasulullah in the Battle of Hunayn when he was alive. They're going to support Ali ibn Abi Talib after the death of the Prophet? So we should never use this argument that is it possible that all of these companions turned away? Yes, it's possible. Because Allah tells us in the Quran that they did in the battle of Hunayn. They abandoned the Prophet when he, in the middle of the battlefield and they turned and they ran without even looking back. Inshallah, in our next session, we'll explore in more detail the concept of Sakina and how this sakina descends upon the heart of the Holy Prophet and the believers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and bless us and illuminate our hearts with the teachings of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tahireen.